Welcome to the very last in the current series of Mum's Half Hour, the show that lets you discuss, share and explore the issues that matter to you. I'm Anushka Williams and welcome to Mum's Half Hour. It's the last in the current series, so a final chance to enjoy the conversation and thoughts of other mums and a chance for you to let off a little steam on the issues which matter to you. This show is fully interactive so you can get your questions and comments to us right now and we'll receive them live in the studio. Now be quick as this will be your last chance for a while. Today we'll be discussing Christmas and all that it brings including some of those more stressful elements like keeping our overexcited children from behaving badly. It's also party season, so we'll be discussing your kids' favourite party outfits and footwear. And there'll be details of our competition to win a year's supply of Start Right shoes. Answering the Mum's Half Hour call and joining me today to discuss all of this and more are Mum of Two, Fee Starstone, and Mums of Three, Antonia Chitty and Sam Haynes. Ladies, thank you very much for coming in and well done for making our panel. So don't forget, this is a live show, so if you have any questions or comments for our panel, please use the box on your screen, click send, and we will do our best to tackle them over the course of the next 30 minutes or so. When submitting your question, let us know whose shoes you'd most like to walk in for a day and why. Leave us with your contact details and one lucky viewer will be in with a chance of winning a year's supply of Start Right shoes. Well done to last month's winner, Sarah Anguish from Great Yarmouth. Now finally, if you are tweeting whilst watching the show, you can get involved with the conversation by using the hashtag Mums Half Hour. So then, girls, thanks again for coming in. So we're going to talk about Christmas. Now obviously Christmas is quite a, it's quite a frantic time, isn't it? So if you've got sort of kids, obviously they're off school, how do you keep them occupied? Any, any tips on what you can get your kids involved in? I tend to try and sign my oldest Daisy up for at least one art class or something because she's she's older she wants to be out with her friends she definitely needs something planned to look mm. forward to so what about if you've got because I've got a, a, a three-year-old boy so boys sort of always need to be quite active so you might know more about this um, Sam so what any suggestions on what you can do to keep boys uh, I, I try to get them out and, and arrange, you know, kind of play dates with friends and their mums, you know, for example. Um, this year um, we've already booked an ice skating afternoon because uh, oh, wow. in Brighton they, they um, put ice down at the pavilion. So that's, that's one um, activity already booked in for them. Yeah. And also just to try and catch up with family and their cousins, you know, um, so that they can get together with their cousins because they live quite far away yeah and, and that's always uh, something they really look forward to because they're similarly aged and have great fun and is it also important sort of not to do too much with kids particularly if you've got younger kids because they can get a bit, bit mm. over tired and a bit over excited so mm. um, how do you kind of break the day up so would you suggest sort of doing something in the morning and then yeah. in the afternoon having a bit of downtime or what do, what do you think I do I tend to do most of my activities in the morning because I've mm. got one and two year olds so Afternoon time is nap time, usually or quiet mm. time. So or you time and me time when they go to sleep, hopefully <laughs> or housework time. Or yeah. house time. <laughs> or the, the fun of housework or planning I mean, for Christmas time. So. Yeah. but I mean, how about any sort of traditional um, activities that they could get involved? Obviously, you mentioned ice skating and things like that. But what about sort of obviously trimming up the house or mm -hmm. getting them involved in in cooking or something like that? Mm. Last year, um, I. I just had a baby. He was uh, oh, about six weeks old as we approached Christmas. We went out and bought the, the tree, the real tree, which we love to have. And I actually sent my husband to the pub with our baby to watch the football in the afternoon. I bet he found and, that very hard. Yeah, well, you know, he, he was he was only sleeping in the pram. It really wasn't a big deal. And so me and my two older boys, we just spent a couple of hours decorating the tree and putting the nativity scene up and all that stuff. It was really lovely. Yeah. It was lovely for me as well because I was free of a baby just <laughs> for a couple of hours, much as I love him. It was really nice to, to be able to spend that time with my older two, which I hadn't been doing much of because mm. he, he was a new arrival really at that point. So I that mean it's good. hard isn't it to sort of divide up your time between your children as well when it's Christmas mm. and you want to do everything but obviously I would imagine planning ahead is quite a good thing that, thing to do. 
I think my tip is always to get the present wrapping done mm. earlier rather mm. than later. And if you've got school idea. children, mm. do it while they're still at school because it's so much easier when they're out of the house mm. yeah. than when you're trying, you know, it's 10 o'clock at night, they've finally gone to sleep because they're overexcited yeah. and you've still got a great pile of presents to wrap. Yeah. That's my Christmas nightmare. I totally yeah. second that. <laughs> a couple of years ago, I left it all till about two days before Christmas. Mm. I was so sick of presents and wrapping paper after several yeah. hours of wrap. I was like, I'm never making that mistake again. Spread it out. As you buy them almost, wrap yeah. them and put them away. It just See, that's saves a good idea. A lot of time. And that's something you definitely don't think about doing is sort mm. of like I think probably the more um, maybe you have sort of three children or two children, you sort of get to the point where you've made your mistakes and you kind of learn. But as um, a, a mum of just one, I'm learning a lot from you, Lot, because that's <laughs> something I, I've learned that you have to be prepared. Yeah. I think also look for bargains during the year. Don't be afraid mm. to shop for Christmas um, in mm. the summer. Mm. You know, you can get some real good bargains and, and, and like the lady say, wrap them up, put them away. And, Label and, them. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Because yeah. they would get lost. You think, who is that for? What's what that? did I get? And remember where you've put them. Yes. <laughs> You'll find them the following summer. I think, oh, I forgot to give that to you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, the thing is, you sort of, it, I used to think people that did early Christmas shopping were insane. And then I, I used to had a family, and now I think I really understand that because a lot cheaper to do it sort of mm. in the sales, isn't it, at the beginning of the yeah. year and things like that. Mm. I always buy wrapping paper actually right after Christmas. It's so I do cheap. Too. The January mm. sales, yeah, absolutely. You know, wrapping paper and Christmas cards, always get it then and stash it away. So, what do you think about on Christmas Day then? So, Christmas Day comes around, you've got obviously maybe a lot of relatives coming around and a lot to do. How do you stop it? just becoming total chaos in the house? Do you give sort of jobs to each child or do you say, right, we're going to do this, you can go in there and play? When do they open the presents? I mean, all this kind of kind of stuff that is quite prominent on Christmas I, I Day. I think you've got to make, you know, Christmas is about family. Well, for me, Christmas mm. is about family. So bringing everybody together and getting everybody to do things, you know, even little children like small jobs, you know, go and hand these little mince pies out to everybody. Or, yeah. And, it, you know, it doesn't make it so stressful for mum and dad if they're, if they're hosting a big party you know with lots mm. of people coming for dinner so just sort of give each child something to do or and yeah. how about if you have children of very different ages though i mean how do you if you have like you mentioned sam sort of you know a six month old and then you've got older mm -hmm. older boys how do you kind of make that work for all the children because it's just different dynamics for different ages isn't it yeah um in our family what works quite well is having my older two entertain my youngest i must oh, say see, that's handy it's, it's really handy um you know it, and it's it's to be honest, an invaluable help for me when I have got three of them mm. to run around after and everything else to do. Yeah. So, so yeah, they, and they love entertaining him as well, my two older ones. They think it's um, great fun making him giggle and laugh and pushing him around in a toy car and things like that. Oh, so. and that, that kind of that mm. warms your heart, doesn't mm. it? Now, now, obviously, as we've been chatting, we've had questions into the studio. Um, and I have a question here from um, Ness. And Ness has written in, how do I explain to my stepdaughter um, that she doesn't need to spend a lot of money on her baby? Um, so the baby will be seven months at Christmas. Um, and she won't understand this year all about the whole thing and will love the paper more than anything. And she doesn't want to sound like a nagging stepmom. But I think we've all probably had experience. You buy this, this glorious toy and then they open it and they play with the box and you think, you know, why did I bother? So what, what would you say to, the, to Ness? I've found my babies haven't needed loads in the way of presents. I think as a parent, you obviously want to get something special but maybe get them something that's going to be longer lasting. And my kids have got lots of very kind and generous and lovely uncles and aunties. And we've kind of said to them, well, you know, they don't need anything when they're little, save it for next year. If you want to give them some money for their savings account, that's great, but don't feel that you've got to buy them anything more than a, a token. Right. If you don't want to. So the key is sort of token presents when they're younger, and maybe things that they could put away and you sort of bring. I remember somebody buying um, my son a snow globe, which yeah. is his first. You know, something that they can just look at and maybe get stimulated by. Now, I've got another question um, from Michelle, and um, she said, I already have two daughters, aged eight and three, and now have my six month old niece in my care. Does anyone have any suggestions as to what I can get her for Christmas? As she already has lots of toys, and my, my girls have grown out, obviously, sort of hand-me-down toys. Um, I would love to get her something special to mark her first Christmas. My budget is a bit limited this year, too. 
So any ideas? I'd say books. You can't go wrong with books. Children love books and books last a lifetime, don't they? So, mm. you know, kind of the old classic sets, you know, Beatrix Potter or... That's a good you know, idea, or maybe sort of something about the Christmas or, yeah. you know, your first and Christmas you book. Some beautiful custom-made tree decorations mm -hmm. for only a few pounds with your child's name's first Christmas on it. And that's something that maybe she won't mind about when she's a baby, but if she can put it on the tree every year as she grows up and knows that's the first year she's part of the family yeah. and it's been there ever since, oh, that's it's a lovely, lovely memento. Oh, I love it. So lots of food for thought there. Now join us after the break when we'll be discussing in all the excitement of Christmas how to make sure the kids behave themselves. <laughs> So it's Christmas time and with it unfortunately come the issues among other things of spoiling the children, getting them to share, what is that word? A mm -hmm. share word, and not get jealous of each other's gifts. What do we do then ladies to make sure behaviour doesn't suffer over Christmas? Because it can get, I mean I seem to remember um, memories of my mum saying are oh, you getting overtired and getting really annoyed but it is the case, they get, they get sort of almost overstimulated by it all. So what suggestions do you have to sort of help you rein it all in? And one thing that I've, I've used quite successfully is money, and it's not a lot of money. What I've said with my boys is, um, if you can be a good boy all day, you can earn 10p, and to them 10p is huge riches, and, yeah. and, and I've offered them the additional bonuses. If you could go to a week and earn your 10p every day, yeah. I'll make it a pound at the end of the week. I mean, that doesn't happen very often, mm. but... Um, the, Don't the, underestimate the power yeah, of money. Yeah, the, the excitement go. of earning 10p was yeah. amazing once I started it off, and I do tend to kind of start it and then it stops and then yeah. kind of restart it when behaviour perhaps deteriorates again, but I've, I've found that one to be yeah. really, really successful, because, I mean, 10p... 10p. How long can you maintain that one there, Phil Sam? The 10p mm, is going to have to go up. Uh, yeah, up I know, you. I know. It's going to cost you it's, fortune. It's probably not for much longer with my eldest, certainly. And yeah, yeah but it, it does work. So you think just an incentive yeah. to make so sort of, you know, or a treat or something? Yeah. What, what do you girls think? I think keeping them entertained and occupied, getting them out there and wearing them out, yes. then they yeah. won't have any energy left to fight. And so, it is like so that, isn't it, of timing? Exercise. Even if it's cold and raining, you know, mm -hmm. put the put the waterproofs on and go out for a nice long walk, and mm -hmm. especially it might be a white Christmas, mm -hmm. playing in the snow, that, that's yeah. exhausting. <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, it is, I mean, how do you, because um, having a three-year-old, it's the issue of sharing is not one that he seems to be grasping very easily. <laughs> so how do you encourage sharing and also encourage children to want to sort of give presents rather than just all about opening up their own? What, what do you suggest, Antonia? It's nice, and my nine-year-old, she definitely thinks it's fun to go and buy presents for her little brothers. And so she sh she's setting them a great example. Yeah. And I think the two-and-a-half-year-old loves all his six-year-old brother's toys and so it's constantly reinforcing well that's Jay's and if you ask him nicely maybe you can have a turn yeah. and this is yours and Jay will ask you if he'd like to play with it and then sometimes saying well, we're going to buy you presents that you can play with together mm. buying trains for the train set mm -hmm. they both love it so realizing mm. that some things you say yes that's yours and other things can be a shared family toy that everybody can take part in right. um, the two and a half year olds getting quite into games and so the games where you take turns you, right. know, you roll a counter you each have a turn he's learning about that and that's a brilliant way of showing people mm. that you know it's not all about you so what do you suggest because obviously you, you talk about the dynamic of, of having sort of more than one child but if you have one child how do you establish sharing is that just a question of you sort of saying I'll take a turn and now you take a turn and, and lots of play dates yeah so, Absolutely. Um, so mm. nurse, nursery yeah. is always good at te teaching them to take their turn yeah um, getting play groups there. if you've got younger yeah. children play groups learning to share lots of toys in a big group of children mm. and what what happens if there's a toy that everybody wants to play with what should we do take it away because <laughs> I have that one quite a lot what, what do I do what do you think I think Yes, it, mm. ideally, look, if it's something like a football, yes. say, look, it's much more fun if we all play with it together. Because quite often we find that the, the, the football yeah. is really the exciting toy for the boys. Yes. But of course, if they learn to play football together, it's brilliant. And we've got little boys next door, and then they're all playing with the football, and there's five of them. So really encourage the, the group activity. So um, the naughty step. This is, this is just one um, 
one way in which parents sort of say, right, you've been naughty, you go on the naughty step. Are there any sort of other tips? If somebody, if a child is being really naughty, what can you do to sort of make them see that it's so wrong? Do you suggest, obviously, the naughty stuff I know a lot of people I, I use. I think it's actually getting in there before it gets to that stage mm. and you, distracting right. them. Right, so art of distraction. If you, if you know your children, you can see that things are winding up. If there's several children, maybe separate them. So somebody come and help me in the kitchen and you go and do that. And just think, well, what can I do that will change the dynamic in mm. the room? Um, the routine, making sure they've had enough sleep if they need naps, get their naps in, because it's all those things that can tip over fun into really bad behavior. But you know, mm. just try and get in there first. Mm. And then yes, yeah, sometimes people do need time out. Yes. Not necessarily the naughty step, but look, you know, why don't you take that new book you've got and go and sit on your bed and right. read it? Because we just need to calm down a little bit. Yes, I mean, that brings me to what I was about to say. I mean, what, what things do you think children respond to um, in terms of sort of, you know, telling them off? What do you think really works? By saying if, 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 you, do, if you do that, then you won't get your favourite toy or you won't get any treats or you won't... How do you, how do you sort I've of always deal found, with it? Um, during my career that a, a, a bean jar works. You have a little jar okay. and you fill it with beans and you have a target, so fill it with ten beans first. And if you get to 20 beans, then we get to do something great together. And they all have to work together to fill these beans to 20. So it's almost like so, a little game Yeah, you, what you just did there, that was great. You shared with your brother, you shared with your sister, put a bean in the jar. And then when there's negative behaviour, we have to take a, a bean away from the jar. And all the time they're working towards this target, and then they get a reward. And it doesn't have to be anything big. It mm. could just be a trip to the park or a bike ride or a trip to the cinema even. So it's sort of like the reward scheme almost isn't it with with that kind of um the way that you've you've tackled it there because you've got the beans and the more that they see it growing the more they think oh we're going to get good and things you, from you this. don't necessarily have to take the bean out you could say oh you know think about what you're doing there we might have to take a bean away from the jar and it gets them stopping and thinking about their behavior mm. so so what do you think if if you really have tried all of this um, all of these sort of um, issues and you've you've found that isn't that your children aren't responding it's what, where can you go? So if you do have a child that really is a very naughty child and you've tried everything, you've tried incentives, you've tried the naughty step, you've tried sort of banishing to the bedroom and it's just not working, where can they go for, for help? It's really easy to feel that you're very much on your own mm. battling with your child's behaviour, but you're not. There's thousands of parents out there who are going through the same battles, so definitely get some support. I've found the Children's Centre locally is very good. Mm -hmm. There's a charity called Home Start, and right. they'll send in a volunteer into your house for a few hours a week to just give you a little bit of support. So is that kind of like a super nanny person, kind of? <laughs> much more, more friend, much down. more friendly and low key. <laughs> right. um, but yeah, it's quite often another mum who's just got yeah. some extra training to okay. help you work with issues with your family. And if your child's at school, maybe talk to the SENCO, the Special Needs Coordinator, because even if your child hasn't got special needs, they might have some resources Right. that will help you. So you know, th there's lots of people out there. Don't feel you've got to cope with difficult behaviour by yourself. Right. And honestly, the sooner you get help, the, the easier it can be yeah. to change things around. Well, I've had a question from um, Joanne. She's written in and she said, my oldest two boys are quite close together in age. So she's um, 17 months apart. Um, one's four and one's five, so very close together. And so they play with all the same toys. I want to get them joint presents this year, but don't know how to do this while still giving them their own presents to open. And of course, avoiding them fighting over the toys. So, so what should Joanne do? I think you can, you know, spend a little more on their joint present and then buy smaller gifts like uh, mm. colouring books, pencils, because. Um, Children don't really understand about the, you know, younger children don't understand about the expense of toys, but if they've got a pile of presents, the same, mm. then they think that's great. And then if they've got their sharing present, that's great. And then they've got all their little crayons or toy cars or yeah, little so you things think to open. One main present and then a few tokens. What do you think, Sam? Do you yeah, think? that sounds like a good idea. I've never, I've never actually done that for my boys because they've got quite different interests. Mm. Um, but yeah, you know, it sounds like a good idea to... As long as they have, I think, things they can identify with that are theirs, their own, Absolutely. on the day, then that will give them kind of some satisfaction as well as the sharing of the, of the main present. 
Right, okay, thank you for those. Um, so I've got another question here from Catherine. And Catherine says, um, how do you get the balance right between your children? She says, I have a problem. Um, one child is getting a few cheap price toys um, and the younger boy is getting a Nintendo and a few stocking fillers. Um, there is more money spent on the younger child but his gifts look a lot less as there is less volume and children don't understand value. They just look at quantity. So, and I think we all, you, they do, they see a big thing, they think, I want the big thing. So, so what should Catherine do? We've got that problem with my daughter, mm. because she wants, you know, at nine, she wants small electronic things. They cost a lot more, but yeah. they come in very small boxes. And I think at nine, you know, she's old enough that we can explain to her that if she wants this, this is going to be the present. Mm. And it's actually costing significantly more than the bigger toys yeah. for the younger boys. Mm. Um, so I think managing expectations mm. if they're old enough to want yeah. small expensive things they do actually need to start appreciating the value right. because otherwise they're going to just lose them drop them break yeah. them um, so maybe if you think they don't understand the value of a Nintendo wait another year yeah, because you don't want them to become spoilt, do you? So it's about sort of instilling it early. Now, we've had a question from Dawn here, and um, you might get this one, Fee. She's talking about her two boys. They're aged Ben, who's two, and Sam, who's one. And um, she's saying, maybe they're too young yet, but I feel more pressure from other mums. Do you think children learn this behaviour from adults? We all want the best toys and clothes for them, and I'm sure this um, competitive attitude rubs off on them. She said, I'm not actually buying anything for my youngest, but will, will I tell other mums this? She, she just feels terrible about that. She said, I'm making the most of it, and I guess until I get the Christmas list. So I guess my question is, if we don't bring them up to be materialistic, does this avoid jealousy, or am I kidding myself? So, so what? <laughs> she wants I think, I the think nicest she's doing things. The right thing. I think when you, yeah. if you've got two, you know, close together, and and one's very young, and they don't really understand Christmas. Save the pennies till you, you know, you really need them when they're a lot older and the lists start coming in, the things mm. they want, and like you say, when they're older, it tends to be electronic things. Yes. And and don't feel feel bad about that at all, no. Yeah. And also to, to cut ourselves some slack, because we all feel bad enough half the time, don't we, as mm. mums, the mum guilt. Um, but just a quick reminder about our competition for your chance to win a year's supply of Start Right shoes. All you have to do is to uh, submit a question and let us know whose shoes you'd most like to walk in for a day and why. Be quick though, as we are over halfway through the show now, and remember to leave your name and contact details too. Join us in part three when, with the party season of first we discuss the outfits your children love to get dressed up in. Welcome back. Now then, ladies, party season coming up. Now, what, um, I imagine if you have girls, I mean, I might be wrong in saying this because I've only got a, a three-year-old boy at the moment, so do girls get more into the whole sort of dressing up, fairy wings, or, you know, what, what do you, where do you go to get the best outfits and things like that? Uh, my nine-year-old is well past the fairy wings and princess <laughs> stages. Oh, really? She's been into the jeans and I won't wear anything else apart from trousers and leggings stage, and she's just getting interested in fashion so she would appreciate some time going and looking for a Christmas outfit mm. but she needs quite a lot of careful steering um, last time we were at the shop she picked out a really lovely prom dress which is very beautiful but we you know it's not something that we'd wear on a family Christmas day because we want something where everyone can sit down on the floor and of course. involve themselves in unwrapping presents and playing games so yeah. uh, we, I think we will be getting her a, a, a slightly more stylish grown-up dress this year but it's going to be a little bit of a, a mm. discussion going on in the shops before right. we come to our final verdict <laughs> but, but it's difficult though isn't it because I mean you know I like sort of nice shoes and I'm sure you like the you know the best jeans or whatever and it's quite hard you know I imagine when you have children as they get a little bit older they're very well aware of labels and things like that I mean I remember my mum trying to buy us mic trainers instead of the, the well-established <laughs> sport brand and telling her this is all right I don't want these um, but you know obviously it can get very very expensive so how do you go around sort of telling them that maybe they can't have that and you found them a nice alternative how much choice do you give them I try to give them the choice of what I can actually let them have. So we live in quite a small town, right. there's some nice small shops. We don't have loads and loads of choice on our doorstep. So we try and just sort of manage and say, well, we can go here or we can go here, and this is how much we can spend. And actually my boys 
they don't want to wear anything different at Christmas at all. Mm -hmm. really? The littlest one's got two or three pairs of trousers that he loves, and if you try and get him into anything different, Just he'll kick up a fuss. So mm -hmm. my yeah. challenge there is to buy the identical set of trousers in the next size up. Yeah, you know. and you don't have to spend a lot of money now to get really nice clothes. I mean, a lot of supermarkets do really good clothes, particularly, you know, if your kids, they just grow so quickly, mm. so you can end up, you know, needing a second mortgage to buy their wardrobes, but nowadays it's, you know, you're really catered for, aren't you? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I tend to, I have three boys, so I, I again, I don't do um, kind of party outfit shopping for them. It, it, they just have a regular uniform outside of school, right. with jeans and, and tops. Um, and my eldest, he'll wear pretty much anything I buy for him. My middle child is slightly fussier, and so I have to be aware. But again, it, it's, it's fussy in the sense that he doesn't like that stripe, he prefers that stripe. It, it's mm. not, you know, down to labels or branding or anything. It really is just down to his own personal tastes. My, yeah. my um, daughter's completely at the fairy wing stage. <laughs> oh, is she? She's, she's, she's <laughs> totally she's there. Yeah. She's totally there. And, you know, I'm not really into pink girly things, but it's. Betsy is completely into fairy wings and tutus and oh. glittery oh. pumps and shoes. So but I also think how much how much of it is us and how much of it is them? Because I remember putting Marley in the um, you know the little Santa romper suit and you know he doesn't even <laughs> remember it. He was so little. But for me, I was like, it's Christmas. We're going to dress you up. And I think sometimes <laughs> actually kids are just fine to like you say wear the mm -hmm. jeans. Yeah. And you know, just be happy, sort of romping about in it. But what happens if you know maybe you do have boys that do want to sort of dress up for Christmas? Any tips on you know where you could go to buy things, or you know what fancy dress outfits they might want to wear? I think you don't really have to spend a lot of money. Like like we were saying before, you know, supermarkets do mm -hmm. do have a a good range, mm -hmm. you know, that aren't expensive. Yeah, you don't absolutely. you know, in a young age, yeah. they don't need labels and. Yeah. They grow so quick. I, d I don't, I mean, certainly my, my eldest is only just nearly seven. He's not aware of labels and branding at all yet. Mm. Whether that's shortly to come and hit me, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but when he was younger, he certainly liked dressing up as in fancy dress. You name it, he wanted to be it, whether it was um, a fairy. He, mm. A huge phase of loving to be in, in beautiful dresses. <laughs> that's yeah. great. So um, we would often visit friends' houses for those. I didn't yeah. invest in an awful lot of pretty dresses. <laughs> um, I can see but, that. But it, actually, in general, he just spent his whole time in, in fancy dress. That's all he yeah. wants to wear. And I think kids so. do that. But what about with shoes and things? So obviously, there's different types of shoes that your kids would wear. And um, it's very important, isn't it, to get your, your kids feet measured in the right way mm -hmm. because I think you can buy sort of affordable shoes but they're not always sort of measured and kids do grow and have sort of wide feet and you know so it's quite important isn't it to go and get them measured regularly. Yes. Yeah I do with mine I take them once every at the most probably every six months and I'll maybe pop them in to just check that they haven't grown too much just even if I don't necessarily buy the shoes from the shop where they're being measured mm. I like to go and get them measured properly just to make sure that they're still yeah, of course. Yeah, I think that's really important yeah. to get them, especially when they're growing, they've got little yeah. feet and they grow so quickly. Yeah. And, and actually on that point, it's probably worth mentioning at this point that you can view top tips on how to best fit a variety of shoe styles via the Start Right YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash Start Right Shoes. Um, so, I mean, it is, it is one of those issues, isn't it, where you do sort of think about, um, you've got to make sure that they're comfortable when they're mm. wearing their shoes and I can't, you know, you can't really stress that enough. Mm -hmm. For girls, it can be a bit challenged once you've got that lovely party dress mm -hmm. and then you've just got school shoes and she yeah. suddenly says, actually my shoes don't go with my dress. So mm. how many pairs of shoes should, should you get? Should you have maybe a pair of shoes for parties and a pair of shoes for school or where do you draw the line? I think I mean, it's difficult with party shoes because they get worn so little. Mm. Um, but sometimes if you go and there's a good offer, you can buy your main school shoes and then find something cheaper mm -hmm. as right. your second pair. With yeah. the boys, it tends to be a pair of main shoes and then trainers. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, you know, they're not fussed about party shoes. No. Um, but I think as daughters get older, it can get more and more challenging because mm -hmm. they want different shoes for different occasions. Mm. And boots. Mm -hmm. yes. Daisy, Daisy loves having nice boots to wear. So, yes. and it's just out of school. And it is, it's just really important to make sure that you go to a professional and get them measured properly. Because I think there is always the, um, you get quite enticed sometimes by shoes that are quite affordable. And you think, oh, I'll get some of those, but then they're not always a perfect fit for your child. And also and they quite often don't last very long. Um, mm. You know, they'll just fall to bits within a few weeks, especially 
boys who like to wear their shoes quite hard. Yeah. You know, and it's a false economy in that yeah. case because you're yeah. just going to have to go and buy another pair. And the, the fashion shoes for girls that have heels really mm. bother me. Because oh, yeah. little girls shouldn't be wearing high heels. No. It's not great for their development. And just before we go, ladies, what do you suggest? I mean, obviously, um, the time does fly when you're having fun. Um, and we're nearly at the end of our chat. But just how do you how do you just look after yourself and have a bit of you time over Christmas? What do you do? Do you have a nice bath? Do you read a magazine? What, what do you do? Um, I try, actually, and just kind of get some time with some friends, you know, outside of children time you know just take a time you know go out for an evening or um which is lovely to do obviously leave my husband at home babysitting <laughs> yeah leave him there but you know we're together every day that's fine <laughs> but it's lovely to do that just to kind of just to take myself away from family life just for a couple yeah. of hours every now and then it's, it's quite important, refreshing isn't it yeah. what do you do Antonio? Well, we've got a great babysitter so it does give my husband and I the chance to go out not all the time but you know especially mm -hmm. over Christmas when it's busy mm -hmm. just thinking mm -hmm. oh we've got a babysitter off my mother's down right we're going to have one night out that's so you just have your us. date night yeah not not all the family there but yeah. just us just for a little bit of, little bit of peace and quiet and yeah. a decent yeah. meal very important and how about you Fee yeah I think I do a bit of both you know night out with my husband night out with the girls yeah. and a shopping trip with my mum. <laughs> yeah, very That's important. always therapeutic. Well, you know what, girls? Time does fly when you're having fun and our half hour is up. Um, and I'm afraid this is also the very last in the series. My thanks to Antonia, Sam and Fee for joining us and indeed to all of you mums who have appeared on the panel over the whole series. And thank you also to you watching for your support and tuning in every time. And we hope you found Mum's Half Hour enjoyable and informative. Don't forget you can also watch all the episodes and find out more about picking the perfect shoes via the Start Right Shoes YouTube channel. All the W's, youtube.com forward slash Start Right Shoes. Bye for now and hopefully we'll see you again very soon.